led by Taylor Burroughs in your spot. And Lorenzo High will play the part of Levi, the disciple. Now the two of these are having a, a, a little lunch one day, and they get into a discussion about Mary and what's going on. Um, one thing I want to tell you is these two are, well, Lorenzo is new at this theater business, and he had a great heart when I was asking for volunteers, he, he jumped right in. He said, I, I'll, I'll try it. And he, come to find out, he is a, an exceptionally talented young man, as well as Taylor, who is an incredibly talented young woman and also a great dancer. We have to keep her from dancing across the stage. <laughs> because it's not appropriate for a play, Charlotte. Um, anyway, the, more than their talent is their heart. They are great, powerful Christians. They, they love God. They have sacrificed over the last couple of months, put a lot of effort into this. And tonight is the debut performance. So again, if I could have your attention, here they are, Mary called Magdalene. <laughs> June when I saw him for the first time. He was walking along the edge of the Galilean Sea, not far from my father's house. I noticed the rhythm of his step. It was different from other men. At one moment, fluid and free from cares. Then suddenly, labor, with all the burdens of a lifetime. Men do not pace the earth in that manner, Levi. None that I have ever known. He was alone, and when he saw me, I had to turn my face away. Why? His eyes were like a flame of fire. When he looked at me, he saw me as no one had ever seen me, and suddenly I was as if naked. The demons trembled and I fell to the ground. So it was true? Oh, yes. The common talk in Magdala was that Mary is mindless and possessed with a demon and should just be avoided. The truth was, I had many demons, torturing my mind and body. And Jesus saw them all. What is it like, Magdalene? What is it like to be possessed by the demon? When? How did it start? When did it happen? A long time ago, when I was young. To begin with, my parents had but one child, and it was supposed to be a boy. Instead, it was me. My father was a wealthy and influential man in my town. He owned most of the fishing boats and was always in the marketplace conducting business. Everyone gained my father's attention. Everyone but me. I was a girl, and he had little time for a girl. Had I been the son he had coveted, I would have grown up at his side and shared his life. I would have been with him in the marketplace when he haggled with the fishermen over the price of the day's catch. Or down at the waterfront inspecting the boats. Or worshiping the Almighty together. But he never had much time for me. What about your mother? She died when I was a little girl. That's right. Joanna told me that. She said that it happened so sudden, that there was no sign that anything was wrong. But you were the only one with her, right? As was my habit, whenever I would awaken in the middle of the night, I would crawl in bed with my parents. I felt so peaceful and protected between them. And I felt that way so rarely. But on this night, my father was at sea, and my mother and I had gone to bed together. As she cuddled me to her, I noticed that she was awfully hot. When I awoke some time later, she was no longer hot. Instead, she was cold, very cold. I knew that something was wrong, but all I could do was look at her until the morning came. She looked so serene. 
I, I'm so sorry. After my mother died, my father didn't know what to do with me, and so I was sent to live with my aunt. No one ever spoke about mother while I was there, and if someone slipped and did mention her, my aunt would quickly silence them. She was only trying to protect you. I know. But the silence only made things worse. I withdrew from everyone and became so unbearably lonely. I stopped talking altogether. There was nothing to say. That's what had happened, Levi. That's when the enemy began to prey on my frightened young mind. I became convinced that I was no longer lovable, that no one cared to be with me or near me, and that I would forever be an outcast. That's when people began to say that I was possessed with a demon. And they were right! The enemy had taken hold of me, twisting and confusing my thoughts and making it impossible to think or feel anything. Anything but darkness and despair. Magdalene, I... I had no idea. No one does. But you returned to your father's house by the sea, right? Yes, though it was an embarrassment to him. He didn't want a demon-possessed daughter living in his house, but he couldn't just throw me out. And certainly, no respectable young man would want to marry the likes of me. The truth was, he didn't know what to do with me. But I made it easy for him. While the demons daily ate into my mind and heart, I could at least find some solace by the seashore. So every morning, I got up and went down to the water. To do what? Oh, <clears throat> think, cry, mourn, watch the boats and the fishermen. My mother and I used to walk along the shore very often before she died. She told me I took my first steps there. So I suppose it was fitting that in the only place of comfort I knew, Jesus should enter my life. What did you two talk about that first day? <sighs> Levi, he was speaking to the sea that morning and to the angels beyond the sea. He turned suddenly and saw me from a long way off. We began moving towards each other, while the enemy within fought desperately to stop me. When he spoke to me, his words were like cool water in a land of drought. He raised his hand against the sky and said, Mary, you are plagued with many demons. They circle about you and within you and eat away at your soul like jackals at a corpse. They suffocate you with fear and lies. They have crippled your spirit and made you a prisoner in your own body. But I say unto you, be plagued no longer, woman. Let your crippled spirit soar with mine and be free. And he placed his hand on my head and commanded the demons to come out. Let me tell you something, Levi. Jesus is not just a man, but a gift from God to all of us. The son of man that Daniel prophesied about? And more than that, the son of God. And still more, God. Wow. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Magdalene. God sets you apart for this truth. I know. Standing there on the shore, liberated from the enemy, filled with love for the first time in my life, I knew I would never be the same. Finally, I had a purpose to my life. And that is? I would dedicate myself to this liberator, to this lover of my soul, and go everywhere that he goes and do everything in my power to help him, that he may free others as he has freed me. Magdalene, 